Studies have found a link between what people eat and their risk of mental illness. The bacteria found within your gut can be controlling your emotions, your depressive, anxiety symptoms, your moods. It is the simple idea that optimizing nutrition is a safe and viable way to avoid, treat, or lessen mental illness. 260 million people suffer from anxiety and 300 million people suffer from depression worldwide. These numbers are expected to rise and scientists try to come up with new ways to prevent and treat anxiety and depression. And they might have found new, unexpected ways to control our mood and treat depression. My name is Clemens and today we'll see how food impacts our mental health. Today we learned quite early that a balanced diet is good for us, but this wasn't always the case. Enter Anorexia Mirabilis. <laughs> Whoa. In the first few centuries after Christ, many Christians believed that the physical body was the enemy of the soul. To prove their piety, many started to starve themselves. You might now ask, what happens if you chronically starve yourself? Well, many started to hallucinate and had visions. So an unhealthy diet, or in this case, not eating at all, can lead to hallucinations. This was already a first hint that food might be important for the function of the brain. Fast forward, the renaissance began, and with that new era, a new sense of fashion. Look at that. Some people wanted to look skinny, and so first diet books were written. In 5058, the Italian Luigi Cornaro successfully lost a lot of weight in a short period of time and published a book about this. His secret? 12 ounces or 340 grams of food a day and 14 ounces or 414 milliliters of wine. Yeah, he drank a lot. In 1614, Giacomo Castelvetro led the groundwork for what we now call the Mediterranean diet. This particular diet will become important later on. But it was really in the 19th century when diets became more fashionable. Suddenly, fashion icons such as Lord Byron or Empress Sissy were cherished by many. Lord Byron was one of the first to follow the vinegar diet, a diet where I drink water mixed with vinegar. Empress Sissy worked out nearly every day and fasted to keep her weight. In the 19th and especially 20th century, industrialization led to the mass production of junk food. With junk food, we suddenly had many new cool brands and commercials, and most importantly, obesity. While populations had to fight starvations in the past, they now had to fight obesity. And this is the reason why today we have so many different forms of diets. While people aim to find out which diets keeps us in shape, they made a new discovery. In a big study comprising 45,000 patients, scientists tried to find out how diets impact mental health. The patients filled out a questionnaire about their dietary habits and then their mental health status was assessed. It was found that certain diets and junk food were associated with a higher risk to suffer from depression. In other studies, scientists tried to find out if another form of diet was actually good for mental health. It was found that this old diet form, the Mediterranean diet, was associated with a lower risk to suffer from mental health issues. And if people made certain dietary changes, their mental health could improve. Clearly there's something in our food which affects our brain, but how is that supposed to work? RL is a 43-year-old man who lives with his wife and two children. He is happy in his marriage and career, but soon this would change. Over the course of weeks, RL started to feel irritated, seemingly for no reason. He came home from work and started to shout during dinner. This became so bad that his marriage started to suffer and his wife asked him to stay at work for longer so that she can eat with her children in peace. This was when RL started to seek medical advice. The doctors questioned RL, but they didn't find any signs of substance abuse or any medical issues, which might explain why he became so aggressive. He had no history of mental illness in his family, and he also didn't report to feel any particular stress in his life. But then the doctors asked about RL's diet, and he revealed that he doesn't really prioritize his food, it's not so important to him. He always skips breakfast, lunch is often rushed, and might consist of one cereal or two. The doctors hypothesized that RL's diet is actually the culprit, and so they gave him a plan what to eat. RL started to eat a balanced breakfast in the morning and cooked meals during lunchtime. He soon reported to feel better throughout the day, and his wife reported that he's more calm. Although it seems like not much, but a dietary intervention was simply enough to change RL's life. A proper diet is not only important to provide our body with enough energy, but also helps our brain to function properly. Every time we eat, food is broken down while it travels through the body. Bacteria in the gut, also called the gut microbiome, then helps us to further process the food, which is then taken up by the body. 
The small food particles enter our bloodstream and travel to different organs, including the brain. Similar to other organs, the brain needs food in order to have a source of energy, but also needs it in order to build very special structures. Especially some polyunsaturated fatty acids are important to maintain brain cells. Other components such as omega-3 fatty acids help to regulate the communication between brain cells and influence the survival of them. Omega-3 fatty acids also help to build so-called anti-inflammatory cytokines. These are molecules which help to keep the immune system in check and so we have no unwanted inflammation. As we said earlier, our gut contains bacteria. And with that I mean our gut contains bacteria. A lot of bacteria. It is estimated that the average human body contains 100 trillion bacteria in the guts. That's 500 times more than the number of stars in the Milky Way. Or 20 times more than the number of views on all YouTube videos per year. Among these 100 trillion bacteria, we find some which are immensely important to make molecules which are used by the brain. And with that I specifically mean neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters are molecules which are used by the brain to communicate with each other and are immensely important for our mood. Bacteria in our gut produce vitamins and some amino acids which then travel through the body to the brain where they are converted into neurotransmitters. And here especially serotonin levels are impacted and serotonin is the neurotransmitter which helps to make us feel happy. In the case of RL, we can speculate that some of his issues were related to his diet. He skipped meals, he hardly had anything proper to eat until dinner, and that might have overall led to a dysregulation in his gut microbiome and then changed his serotonin and neurotransmitter levels. So this is a hint that the right food is important for our mental health status and that we need the activity of bacteria, but do we have more studies? I mean, obviously, right? Researchers find more and more links between having certain brain conditions and having or not having certain bacteria in the guts. Mental disorders are often associated with less diverse and more unbalanced bacteria in the guts. For example, the amount of the bacteria at Bifidobacterium and Lactobacillus are often reduced in people who suffer from major depressive disorder. Other bacteria which we consider as being more harmful for our guts are often increased in people who suffer from depression. Especially the two bacteria Morganella and Klebsiella seem to have a causative role in the development of depression, according to multiple research groups. It is proposed here that both bacteria can lead to inflammation in the guts and a leaky gut barrier, which can send stress signals to the brain. Moreover, neurotransmitter levels can also become disrupted as losing the right or gaining the wrong bacteria might result in a decrease in necessary amino acids or vitamins. At this point though, I also want to emphasize that this field of research is highly complex. Our gut microbiome impacts our mood and especially disturbances in the gut microbiome can impact mental health. But of course the gut microbiome is not the only factor which impacts mental health. So it's not that people simply have the wrong bacteria in the gut and then they develop depression, it's way more complicated. But still through certain diets we can promote the growth of certain bacteria which then help to overall improve our mood, as we will see. Let's say you want to have a healthy diet and possibly improve your mood. What should you eat? I've gone through the literature, which is also why this video took relatively long to make, and I've here a summary. Again, there's a lot to read, so it might be that I've missed something and your favorite food is not on this list, but here is what I found. Food, which is often part of the so-called Western diet, is generally bad for our mental health. We often find your food high in saturated fat, refined sugars and salts and low in fiber. So burgers, fries, pizzas or donuts all fall into this category, unfortunately. Of course we can also make healthy versions of these foods, but we now just stick to what we call the classical western diet. The western diet has been associated with an unhealthy gut microbiome. The presence of refined sugars, saturated fats and salts have been linked to inflammation in the gut. This then leads to a dysregulation in gut microbiome, which might be why the Western diet is linked to an increased risk to develop anxiety, depression or even ADHD. But take this with a grain of salt because the Western diet itself is also associated with obesity, which is generally associated with a poorer mental health status. So also here it is a bit more complicated, but we can say that the Western diet promotes inflammation in the gut and a dysregulation of bacteria, which then have an effect on our mental health on their own. So now we come to healthy diets. 
The Mediterranean diet looks like the most promising form to prevent depression. A Mediterranean diet is rich in fruits, vegetables, olive oil, whole grain and lean protein such as chicken and fish. Especially avocados, nuts, olives and vegetable oils contain unsaturated fatty acids and polyphenols. And as we've pointed out, these fats are important to grow structures in the brain, but they're also important for our gut microbiome itself. This is also backed up by some data. In one study it was tested whether unsaturated fatty acids can help to alleviate symptoms in people who suffer from bipolar disorder. Bipolar disorder is a mental health condition where people experience extreme mood swings. Over 12 weeks, participants were counseled by a dietitian and started taking in unsaturated fatty acids. It was found that high levels of certain unsaturated fatty acids led to an improved mood in the patients. It was further found that the Mediterranean diet can help to protect against depression. In one study, over 10,000 university students were enrolled. And that's like the most unhealthy group when it comes to diets, in my opinion. Over a period of four and a half years, it was found that students who followed a Mediterranean diet had a 42% reduced risk to develop depression. And based on all of this data, scientists now try to develop effective new therapies against depression where we just exchange parts of the gut microbiome. These studies right now are very small, but they are just the beginning. Researchers recently reported that fecal transplants improved symptoms in two depressed patients. In fecal transplants, the gut bacteria are completely exchanged. Here the patients received transplant high in what we consider healthy bacteria, which led to changes in the gut microbiome. And this actually seemed to help. In another study, patients suffering from chronic stress received a probiotic regimen that contained the bacteria lactobacillus. Within three weeks, especially patients who originally reported to feel the most depressed began to feel better. But again, the field of this clinical research is still very young, so a lot of different studies have yet to be conducted until we have effective treatments on a larger scale. But in my opinion, it's still extremely cool that we can do that, right? From hallucinating believers over cooking books to highly processed food and diets, it took a long time for us to understand how our diet impacts our mental health. And we're still just at the start. We've only just started to understand that our food doesn't only impact our cells, but also bacteria in our gut, which help our brain to function properly. If that works, we might do well. If there are dysregulations, however, we might have a higher risk to suffer from deteriorating mood, depression, and anxiety disorder. By understanding how we can change our diet to improve our mood, we can start to develop new therapies. And together with modern medicine, a healthy lifestyle can make a huge difference in our lives and helps us to strive for happiness. Cheesy! And with that, two questions to you. How does your diet currently look like? And have you ever noticed the changes in your diets impact your mental health? Feel free to share your experiences in the comments. That video took actually long to make, so feel free to like it and do all the other YouTube stuff or don't do it whatever you like and with that i'll see ya if you want to know how exercise creates super brains or how vitamin supplements can become toxic you might like these videos